Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about muscle fiber types. And of course, here we're talking about skeletal muscle, um, not smooth or cardiac muscle. So skeletal muscle fiber types, uh, we have a whole broad spectrum. Um, so although classically we tend to group muscle fibers into three types, type one, type 2A, type 2B, um, or like in this table, they call it type 2X, but we're meaning type 2B, same thing. Um, but really, if we measured the characteristics of lots of different muscle fibers, those characteristics would fall on a sliding scale. There'd be a whole spectrum of characteristics. They do not cleanly all fit into type 1, type 2A, type 2B, uh, the way that we tend to discuss them. Um, so we use those categories to help group together and understand the characteristics of muscle fibers, uh, but it's not black and white like that. It's not, they don't fit so cleanly. Like we could make five categories or 10 categories and group them according to their characteristics because we're just taking something on a sliding scale on the spectrum and trying to classify and describe characteristics. So according to our, our classical definition, so type one fibers, those are also referred to as slow twitch muscle fibers or slow oxidative because of the energy system that it uses. Um, these fibers are smaller and smaller fibers means less force production. So smaller and weaker essentially compared to the other types. Um, they're also red because they contain large amounts of myoglobin because in an oxidative energy system, we require a lot of oxygen. Um, so slow twitch muscle fibers store more oxygen in the fibers so that they're ready to produce force. Um, they also have greater endurance. They're more resistant to fatigue because of the energy system that they use and because they have more oxygen available. Uh, so they're able to produce more ATP more efficiently and they're capable of prolonged contractions because of that. Type 2A muscle fibers, so the intermediate fibers, uh, so they're also referred to as intermediate twitch or fast oxidative glycolytic, uh, referring to the fact that uh, they do contract faster than slow twitch and that they can utilize both an oxidative and a glycolytic energy system. Uh, these are intermediate in size, which means they're intermediate in their force production. Uh, these are also red. They have large amounts of myoglobin, uh, intermediate in their resistance to fatigue um, because of their energy systems and that they store oxygen. Um, and they contract and relax faster than type 1 muscle fibers, but not as fast as type uh, 2B muscle fibers. So then type 2B, those are referred to as fast twitch or fast glycolytic, again, referring to its energy system. These are the largest fibers, therefore the, they're capable of producing the greatest amount of force. Uh, they're white because they have lower amounts of myoglobin, um, capable of producing the most power and the most force, again, because they're the largest. Um, capable of contracting the fastest, but they also fatigue the fastest because of their energy system um, and because they're using less oxygen and they're less efficient at producing ATP. Okay, so as I mentioned, our muscle fibers really are on a spectrum. It's a sliding scale of characteristics. Um, so although we describe them traditionally in these three groups, we could classify them in lots of other ways. Uh, so like Botanelli, for example, this is a paper from 1999. Um, he studied muscle fibers and suggested grouping them into five types. So he grouped them into type 1, type 1, 2A, type 2A, type 2AB, and type 2B. Um, I know they're kind of interesting <laughs> names, to, but it's because he's trying to point out that we could put an extra category that's between type 1 and type 2A and another one between type 2A and type 2B. Um, so he grouped into five categories. Uh, but that just highlights the fact that um, muscle fibers have variable characteristics that don't just cleanly fit into our three types. Another interesting thing about muscle fiber types that I wanna point out is that a type, the type of fiber a muscle fiber is is based on the type of input it's getting from its motor neuron. 
So if we have a motor unit where we have one motor neuron and many muscle fibers that are controlled by that motor neuron, all the fibers will be the same type of whatever type in response to the input it's getting from the motor neuron of that motor unit. So experimentally, what has actually been done is they'll take like a fast twitch motor unit and a slow twitch motor unit. And if you switch the motor neurons, the types of fibers will switch to adapt to the input it's getting from uh, its motor neuron. So the type of fiber is not inherently designed in the fiber. It's the type of fiber is because that fiber has adapted to the type of input that it's getting from the nervous system. So it's adapted to be efficient and good at responding to the input that it's getting. So a muscle fiber will get bigger or smaller and adapt and use different energy systems and um, build more or, or take away mitochondria in response to what type of input it's getting. Okay. And so, and of course, there's other ways that we change input. And so it's theoretically, we might be able to change motor or, um, muscle fiber types from one type to another. And that's kind of theoretical. And there's some experiments that have demonstrated that effect um, from um, like lack of training, um, being very sedentary or increasing training or through electric muscle stim. So there are different experimental methods that people have used um, to change muscle types from one to another but it's not definitive whether that's really um practical like from a training standpoint like can we train and an increase um type 2b fibers it's not likely because the more um the more input we have from a motor neuron into its fibers the more it will actually start to transition towards the type 2a or type 1 fibers because we're increasing the amount of activation so it wants to increase its endurance to tolerate that increased activation so it's actually with disuse that we see a transfer more towards the type 2b fibers um, so it's it's sort of interesting there's a lot of interesting science in that area so if you're interested in that topic i highly recommend um, looking into that further, you could even write your um, final paper on that or think about something like that for your distinction project. All right, so that is all I have for you in this lecture, and I'll see you for the next one.